Okay, in this video we're going to cover the drawing portion of our assembly assignment. First thing we're going to do is open up that previous drawing template that I've given to you for previous projects, and that's in our shared folder. We're going to do a save as was uh, 2.1.4 selfie stick assemblies. And we're going to make sure that that goes into the same folder that we've saved everything for this project. That's important for file management. Then if you forgot how to do it, we're going to change the template size because it's probably currently set up for an A size. And we want it to be nice and big for a B size. We'll bring in some of our shaded assemblies, exploded assemblies, and do a detail view. And then actually start uh, adding balloons and a parts list and filling in that title block. All right, so let's go to Inventor. Let's do an Open. And let's navigate to our Share Drive the period that I have you and whoops went the wrong one inventor shared files click on the IED drawing template and open it then do a save as navigate to your selfie stick folder so you're going into your shared folder going to that selfie stick folder And let's call this selfie stick assemblies drawing. I'm going to put a number two at the end of mine because I already have one made. But go ahead and save that. And now I have the template saved. So what are we going to make? This is the final drawing that you're going to make for your project. And the first thing we need to do is set it up as a B size template. So if you remember, an A size is 8.5 by 11, and a B size is 11 by 17. So it's actually double in size. And what that is going to allow us to do is kind of blow up these detail views and give us enough space to work with and also add in a parts list. So let's go ahead and first thing we're going to do is select the template over here in the model browser and right click it and go to edit sheet. Then we're going to change it to a B size right here for the size option. That drop down menu, change that to a B, and now you'll see our height is 11 inches and our width is 17 inches. Go ahead and click OK and you'll see the template automatically adjust. I'm going to hit the save icon. And then we're going to place in a shaded exploded assembly view roughly at a 0.35 to 1 scale and we're going to add in a view label for it. Just so you know, the scales may vary a little bit for you if you can't fit something exactly, but you should be able to use these same scales for the three views that we're going to insert. So the first one is the exploded assembly. So I'm going to go ahead and choose base up here for placing views. And if yours doesn't pop up automatically, the reason why mine did is because I have the exploded open, but if yours didn't pop up, just click this little folder here, drop this down, go to your student folder, and go click on your exploded assembly. So where is that? That's in here for me. So you're looking for that selfie stick exploded assembly file. All right, and then once you get it open, if yours is in a weird view, like in a front view or a right side view, click that little home icon, and then the scale we're going to go 0.35 to 1. So mine's currently at 0.16. I'm going to change that from 0.3 or to 0.35 colon 1. And then let's turn on the label. So I'm going to click the little light bulb to turn it on. And then we're going to adjust this name for that label. That is going to say exploded assembly. So I'm going to type that in, in all caps. And that should be good. Oh, I forgot to shade it. So I'm going to double click back into that, turn on shaded for the view option, or for the view style, I should say. Click OK. I'm going to grab this label, click hold, and drag it roughly about there. What else do we got? So we may need to move that a little bit later, but we'll get to that. Let's add in the, I think that's what I had next, is the assembly um, or assembled view. So where are we at here? Place in a shaded assembly view roughly at a one-third scale. So that's where I'm going next. And I'm going to hit save, base. I'm going to go search and find my 
assembly. So I'm going into my student folder, into my selfie stick folder, and I'm looking for the selfie stick assembly where it's all put together. I'm going to open. I'm going to hit the home icon. And I'm going to just move this so I can kind of see what the heck's going on. Then I'm going to turn on shaded. I'm going to turn on the view label. And I'm going to type in all caps, uh, assembly. And the scale was a one-third scale, or one to three. So shaded, label, scale, click OK. I'm going to click, hold, and drag the label up so it's right there. I'm going to kind of scoot this down in the bottom corner as close as I can get it. I don't want to go into the title block or into the border, though, so watch out for that. I'm going to maybe move it up just a hair. There we go. And then now that I got that, I'm going to scoot this over a little bit. Somewhere right there. And I know that I'm about to do a detail view. So I'm going to scoot this label over a little bit. All right. I'm going to hit save. And then the next thing we're going to do is add in a shaded rectangular detail view of the top portion of the selfie stick at roughly a one-to-one -one scale. So let's go ahead and do that. So if you remember, to add a detail view, it's up under the Create panel up here. So I'm going to left-click it. And if you look down in the bottom here, it says Select a View. So we want to select the exploded assembly. So with that red dotted line around it, I'm going to left-click to select that view. And then I'm going to change my scale to a 1 colon 1 and I'm gonna do a rectangular and then now where this part's important we want to roughly find kinda like the middle uh, pretend there's a rectangle around here so if you take a look at mine here see this rectangle Wherever we click in the middle is where this rectangle is going to be based off of. So I'm going to roughly click around where the shoe is or these two parts right here. And then you'll see how the rectangle is created. If you want to just watch me for a second, just watch for a second. So I'm going to roughly make my first click right here. Left click, let go. And you'll see that I'm now creating a rectangle. I'm going to pan over based off of the center there. And I can always readjust this, so don't feel like this is the end-all be-all. But get a rectangle that kind of wraps around that whole front portion there, and then left-click. And you'll see now that I have the detail, the blown-up detail view, getting added. Now when I go to place this, I'm watching up top there to make sure I don't go into the border. And I'm watching the left side of the border over here to make sure I don't go into that. Alright, so I will... Oh, and I want to make sure that... Shaded turned on. Yeah, I want shaded on. And then I'm going to left click and place this. And then now it's in there. Um, some things that I noticed, I don't like where this is at because it's running into that. So we can go ahead and um, move this detail label up here under the detail view. If you don't like your rectangle, you can click on it and you can drag. Or you can move the center a little bit if you wanted to. So you can readjust this. Just watch the corners and the outer ends of that to make sure you're not cutting things off. And then by readjusting, I can now actually move this a little bit to give myself some more room. And what do we got next? I'm going to hit save so I don't lose my work. Next, we need to add in balloons. What the heck are balloons? Well, if you remember from your notes, we add in the balloons to identify each various part. And those balloons correspond to the parts list. So if you look, number three in the parts list, item number three is the phone holder top. There's one of them, that's quantity. QTY stands for quantity. So there's one phone top holder. It's number three. It's made of steel. And there's its mass and volume. The parts list can include other things, but um, I just wanted to show you how the balloon numbers correspond to the parts list. We'll get to that next. Let's do the balloons first. 
Um, with the balloons, you don't want the actual arrowhead to be horizontal or vertical. You want a nice little angle. I try and keep them in similar angles. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect, but I just want to make it look neat. The arrowhead should always touch the outer and outer edge of the object. You want to always try and do that, not like somewhere in the middle of it. Um, and you just want to make it easy to read, easy to understand. So what I'm going to do is just start on this part with the top and work my way back. And you'll notice that I labeled the uh, stick top and stick bottom in this view. So I'm kind of moving around between the exploded and the detail to label certain parts. The smaller intricate ones in the top portion of the selfie stick I labeled up here and those bigger longer ones I labeled over here. So let's go show you how to add in some balloons. Under the annotate ribbon you're going to notice over on the top far right the option for a balloon or B on the keyboard. Either one works. And then once I do that notice the plus sign it's saying hey what component do you, or part file do you want to add a balloon to. Now where you click is where it's going to add the tip of the arrowhead. So if I click here in the middle of the part, you'll notice here in a second, just click OK, that it starts to add the arrowhead in that prox or that area. If you want to get out of it and just escape, just hit escape. But balloon, click the part, say OK, and then now I'm going to just go ahead and left click once. And then now what you're doing is you're adding in the leg of the balloon. So I like to keep these horizontal. So I just drag it out a little bit and make sure that that little line is straight. Not like this, not like this, not over here. I'm just going to go a straight horizontal line to the left, right about there. Left click and then right click, continue. A lot of people, after they add the little leg, forget to right click, continue. They're like, wait, it's trying to do it again. All right, so it's going to be a few clicks. Let me do one more. I'm going to go balloon again. I'm going to click the edge of my part. Going a nice angle. Now, I don't want to go straight horizontal like this. And I never want to go straight, you know, vertical like this. You should always go to a nice angle. Left click. Add the leg. Make sure it's straight. Not all the way out like this. Just a little one. Left click. Right click. Continue. So left click. Left click. Right click. Continue. So there's those two parts. Let's keep moving on. Notice I'm still in the balloons, so I'm going to go ahead and click the edge of this part. Notice I'm zooming in to kind of see where I'm clicking. I'm going to extend this balloon up, left click, left click, uh, right about there, right click, continue, and repeat that process. And I got one more here. Now, don't worry if your numbers are different than mine. If your numbers are different, it's fine. It's just the way, it's just the order that you brought the parts into the original assembly. So when I did my assembly, the first part that I brought in was this thumb screw. That's why that one's number one. Then I brought in this and I brought in this. So don't worry if your numbers are different because they're automatically going to line up with your parts list anyways. So don't freak out if your numbers are different than mine. I got two more parts I got to label. I got to go this one. And I got to do this part. So now that I have all those labeled with the balloons, let's go ahead and hit save. And then where are we at? My list here. We're going to add a parts list and show you how to edit that. And then we're going to fill in the title block. We're going to export the PDF and then talk about what you need to submit. So let's talk about a parts list. So we added in all of our balloons. And remember, escape is your best friend. Hit escape to get out of whatever tool you're in. You'll notice while I'm still in the annotate ribbon, the parts list up here under the table panel is where I'm going next. So I'm going to go ahead and click on parts list. And then I'm going to go ahead and it says select the view that you want to use for the parts list. So what I'm going to do is select the exploded assembly here and just click on that. You'll notice that right now 
it just it's now using that exploded assembly view to create the parts list there's also some other stuff and some other settings but we're not going to touch any of that i'm just going to leave it and i'm going to click ok now as soon as i do that you see this like blank rectangle well what it wants you to do right now is add in the parts list somewhere we're just going to place it out here in space and i'm just going to left click we're going to edit it out here and then move it into the template and put it in the right spot. Some things that we need to do are get rid of the description because I don't need that. And I want to add in uh, material, mass, and volume. So how do you edit the parts list? Just left click it once, right click, and do edit parts list. I'm going to click on the description drop down menu here and then right click and go to column chooser. So what we're about to do is choose what columns we wanna see in the parts list. So left click, select the description, right click, column chooser. Then what I'm gonna do is here are the ones that are being shown in the parts list. I wanna remove description, so click on it and press remove. What did I have next? Material, so here are the options that we can add in. You could add in a whole bunch of different things that are related to your various part files. What I want though is material, so I'm going to add that. And then I want uh, volume, I'm going to add that. And then I want mass, and I'm going to add that. Uh, but actually, I think I did material, mass, and then volume. So how do you maneuver these? All you do is click on it, and you can move it up or you can move it down. So I want it to go material, mass, and then volume. So I'm gonna move that one up. So it should say item, quantity, part number, material, mass, volume. So you can move them around by using these and clicking on it. I'm gonna click OK, and you'll now see that those are now being shown in the parts list window. I'm gonna click apply, and then you'll see my parts list out here get updated. I'm gonna click OK, and I'm gonna press save. If this ever pops up on your screen, always click yes to all and click OK if you ever get that message. It's just updating all the information that we've been working on. Now, this parts list is very big and we need to edit it so it's nice and neat and it fits in this lower corner. So what I'm going to do is pay attention to where I have two lines of text. See how there's this line and then this line? Whereas this is just a single row, that's a single row. I want to look for wherever there's two lines of text. Wherever that is, I'm going to hover over that column right there. I'm going to left click, hold, and drag it to uh, the right a little bit to collapse this one. And then what I'm going to do is grab this and scoot it over. Did you see that? I grabbed this column divider and moved it left to make it a single line text. And look how much that just shortened the height of the parts list. So by clicking and moving that, you want it just to be a single line. And then I'm going to just keep doing that. I'm going to scoot this over as far as it'll go. Scoot this over. But I don't want to go too far because I don't want two lines of text. Right there. Scoot this down. And scoot this down. So by tweaking those column dividers, you can adjust the height and the width of the parts list to make it a little bit smaller and neat. Now that I'm done with that, I'm going to hover till I see that move symbol. Do you see that? With the parts list selected, I'm going to hover until I see the move symbol, left click, hold, and drag, and then just scoot it and lock it into that lower left corner and let go. I'm going to do a quick save, say yes to all, click OK, and then now we need to fill in our title block. So I'm going to expand the template if it's not already done. I'm going to go into the title block, expand that, and double click on field text. Type in my name in all caps, my full name. The project title, what did we have for this? 2.1.4 Selfie Stick Assemblies. 2.1.4, all caps, Selfie Stick Assemblies. Scale, now we have three different scales going on. So what I'm going to do in the title block, I'm just going to type as noted. Why is it doing that? Uh, let me just click OK for a second and go back into that. There we go. As noted for the scale. And then, I don't know what's going on with this. 
Oh, there we go. And then I'm going to type in the period and click OK. If you're getting some issues, just click OK and then go back into it. I don't know what was going on. There was a little bit of a glitch there with the software. Um, and then I'm going to hit Save again. Yes to all. Click OK if that pops up. And then finally, I'm going to export a PDF. So export PDF. Make sure that the name is good. Go into Options. Change that resolution to the highest it'll go. And click OK. And then click OK again to save or click Save. And then now it has exported this drawing as a PDF. So what do you need to turn into me? You need to upload the PDF and the picture of your notes that we took in your engineering notebook. So there's two things you're turning into me. The PDF and the notes that we took in your engineering notebook for this Google Classroom assignment. That's it.